so we've been talking today about various components that have been powering e-commerce. We've been talking about transactions. We've been talking about social commerce and social media and how customers first engage brands and retailers. Uh, sometimes we don't think about a key component, which is customer service and how we service our customers during that purchase path, after that purchase path. And um, it's a key component within the e-commerce model as much as the real world retail experience as well. And so I wanted to bring in uh, an expert in the space, Mike McCarran, who's VP of sales at Gladly, to talk uh, a little bit about how customer service is evolving within retail. Hi, Mike. Welcome to Retail Innovation Week. Hey, Paris. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Maybe uh, a few of us know about Gladly, but it'd be great if you can just give me a little context and give, just uh, give us the high-level pitch in terms of what Gladly does. Yeah, so as, a, as, a, as an overview for folks that may not know who Gladly is, Gladly is a business-to-consumer customer service platform that is really in the market to challenge and, and sort of um, sort of think differently about the kinds of customer service experiences that retail and commerce brands can deliver for their consumers. One of the big things that we noticed many, many years ago was that the legacy model of cases and tickets being used for customer service didn't necessarily apply well to the consumer experiences and the consumer service um, experiences that they were having and they were receiving from the brands. And so as a result, the consumer and the brand was under delivering or was underwhelmed in terms of how the service experience was working because they were using legacy ticket and case-based solutions to try to deliver highly personalized service. And it just simply wasn't working well. So let's unpack that a little bit. Um... I'd love to understand later, like what ultimately you deliver. But first of all, what are these new expectations uh, and in terms of customer service, especially the ones that have been accelerated over the last 12 months? Yeah, so I think one of the biggest things that we have noticed, and I think this is something that is pretty common among a lot of consumer brands, is the traditional model of, of service has been thought of as these silos of channels that the customer can use to engage service, whether it be voice or email or chat or messaging. And as a result of that, most brands have had to adopt and implement and bolt on disparate third-party systems to create what's sort of being you know, described in the market as an omni-channel customer service experience. But what that's essentially doing is it's creating a bunch of silos of communication across the various channels. But if you think from the consumer's perspective, the consumer doesn't think about the silos of communication. They think horizontally across all of the different channels that they could possibly use to engage service. And they choose to use the channel that's most convenient for them at that time. So whether it's a phone call or a chat or an email or a social media message or even an SMS, the consumer is thinking about the issue that they have with the brand. They're not thinking about what channel they're using. They're thinking about what is most convenient for them at that time. And brands need to start thinking about offering the ability for the consumer to engage the brand across those channels, but do it in a way that's very seamless so the agents are able to follow that conversation and follow that interaction regardless of the channel. That's an expectation that five years ago or 10 years ago, I don't think existed, but now it's certainly mainstream for consumers to think that way. And that's a big part of what sort of legacy technology and legacy ticketing systems haven't been able to deliver. There seems to be a connectivity in terms of data and the flow of data. Can you just tell me a little bit about the role customer data plays in all of this? Well, I, th I think customer data plays an incredibly important role in delivering. So one of the key themes that Gladly really focuses on, and I think any consumer brand should be focusing on, is how do you deliver personalized service and how do you deliver sort of high value service to the customers that you do business with? If you know that customer, if you know their buying history, if you know their buying behaviors, if you know where they are relative to your loyalty program or VIP status, if you know the last time they reached out and whether that was a positive a neutral or maybe even a negative customer service experience, the more context of information you have about 
the person, the individual consumer, the better you are able to serve that customer in a very high touch, highly personalized way. And I think one of the key themes that we continue to see both in, in working with our existing customers, as well as just doing some independent third party surveys is that consumers value being known and feeling valued by the brand that they do business with. And they want the service experience to be an extension of the in-store experience that they have. And clearly that's, that's even more important now, given that many consumers are actually foregoing the in-person experience and they're sort of doing a lot of shopping and a lot of, of, of sales is happening online. How do brands deliver highly personalized service to consumers when the only way to engage them is through the customer service channel? There's been some conversation about frontline employees, whether they're frontline within a call center or a service center and frontline within a store. Um, maybe you can talk to me about some ways that companies to, need to be empowering these associates to provide best in class customer experience. Yeah, so I think there's a lot of ways to do that. Certainly from a, a, a traditional customer service sort of experience perspective, the, the frontline team that's engaging with consumers to solve problems and to address issues. You know, one of the most important things is, is you want to empower that frontline team to be able to resolve issues quickly. So, so one of the big factors that consumers appreciate um, a lot when it, comes to, when it comes to service experiences is am I talking to somebody or engaging with somebody who is empowered to solve my problem? Are they empowered to sort of address the issue that they, that they have? And can I get the issue resolved quickly? So being able to do that and being able to empower those agents with the, the, the ability to sort of take care of that customer's issue is a big component and a big factor of building great service. Another big factor of empowering the frontline service team is to provide them with the knowledge and the education and the content that they need to deliver the level of service, whether it be product questions or return policy or other related things having frontline agents feel like they have access to the information and the knowledge that they need to address those questions is certainly an important part of the customer service experience as well. When you start to incorporate maybe even some of the in-store experiences. So one of the things that we saw over the course of the last nine months was obviously the, the shutdown of a lot of the retail store experiences. You had all of this domain expertise and knowledge of store associates, stylists and personal shoppers and people who really understood the products and services that their company were, were offering, those skill sets were oftentimes very different than what you would find in the traditional contact center. But now that a lot of people have taken their in-store sales and they've migrated and moved those over to a more of an e-commerce online digital sales experience, what we're finding is, there, is that customer service teams are starting to leverage the in-store domain expertise and they're starting to find opportunities to help them provide online consultation of styling and you know, personal shoppers or things of that nature so that the customer service team, which has traditionally not been in the store, you now have an extension of that customer service team that includes store associates that have more of a, of a sales orientation to how they engage, but they also are domain experts in terms of products and services that the company has to offer their customers. And that combination of great service, but also great high value sales experiences and high value stylist experiences can help deliver a really positive experience for consumers that are looking for help. Yeah, we've spoken to a couple of retailers during this conference where uh, they've, they've found just that they've uh, kept their staff, their retail staff on board and trained them as customer service people and they have realized that uh, it brings so much added value having these uh, people who have this had face-to-face -face communications with customers and uh, experience the product and they can bring that into kind of a digital experience. And then after that immersion, they can then take that back to the store and they will take that back to the store. Yeah, uh, and I think I think that what, what, what oftentimes will happen too is I don't think that, uh, it, it, may, it might be that the, the retail store associates sort of move away from the traditional customer service role, or at least like, you know, this, this sort of temporary sort of location that they've been working or operating as part of an extension of the customer service team. But I think a lot of the leading innovative customer service organizations are going to start to recognize that having staff on the contact center or customer service team that is more sales oriented and is more sort of design oriented around sort of helping to provide sales support, 
that's going to become part of the um, the the team structure or part of the skill set, I think, of a lot of really innovative customer service teams because they're going to move away from being very reactive, transactional. I'm going to solve the problem and then move on to the next issue to being much more collaborative, proactive, and sales oriented to try to turn what's traditionally viewed as a cost center into more of a revenue center. So how do you take that experience where you have a client or a customer or a consumer live on a chat or on a phone call, how do you turn that service experience into a sales opportunity to drive more upsell or cross-sell of what you what you bring to market? Certainly, we really like that idea of kind of rethinking customer service as a, and rethinking of, of it as a revenue center rather than a cost center. Um, to close, maybe we can talk a little bit about how Crate and Barrel leveraged Gladly to void to evolve its kind of issue re- re- resolution, and they've been able to think about how to drive sales through it. Yeah, I think one of the one of the interesting things is that um, if you think about uh, you know the the shift, obviously every, everything sort of changed quite considerably in in the February March time frame where a lot of companies had to rethink how they were going to engage in that service experience. And, you know, the, the, the notion of people walking into a store was, was not non-existent. There was just no opportunity to do that. So they had to find ways to continue to drive sales and to continue to drive a great customer experience, despite a lot of the challenges that existed. And, and I think Crate and Barrel is a, is a great example of that. And now, you could you could sort of say that if there was a company or a segment of the market that was um, influenced in a positive way by shelter in place or stay at home orders, it's a company that offers home furnishing and kitchen appliances and kitchen sort of products because everybody was home cooking and they were all sitting on their their old couches and they were thinking, I need something new, right? Mm-hmm. So the idea that Crate and Barrel had this opportunity to engage, and again, part of the example I mentioned before where they were taking sales associates that were really great at understanding design and style and sort of the product expertise. And they were leveraging that domain expertise in the contact center world was a, was a big part of what they ended up doing. And what they ended up providing for customers was not only the, the, the sales consultation and the design consultation, but they made it very easy through the Gladly customer service platform to process the actual purchase of, of an item. So whether it be a lamp or a side table, even like, you know, five, six, $8,000 couches that they were selling, people were buying those kinds of large ticket item uh, items online via chat, sight unseen. Like they, were not, they weren't walking into a store and sitting down, but they were using the knowledge and the domain expertise of the sales associate that they were talking to, to get a feel and to get a sense of what that item would be like. And they were actually completing the purchase online via the chat capability built into Gladly. So they saw just a tremendous amount of sales and sales revenue come through that service experience because it was highly personalized. It was high touch with a really domain expert, knowledgeable person. And it was a very seamless experience to move from chat right into a chat payment that Gladly provided for them. That's wonderful. It's been really interesting and quite eye-opening to think about new opportunities we have here with customer service and the power of customer service. Mike McCarran, VP of Sales at Gladly. I really appreciate your time today. Thanks for being part of Retail Innovation Week. Thank you for your time as well. Appreciate being here.